Big Jack Films, a real Canadian critic. Big Jack Films is there when you need a commentary when there's trouble. Big Jack Films is there. Big Jack Films, a real Canadian critic. Big Jack Films, commentary time. Okay. Hey guys, what's up? It's Big Jack Films, and welcome to another commentary. We haven't done one of these in a while, so I figured I'd do one. This was actually requested by one of our viewers who wanted us to talk about the review of G.I. Joe Retaliation and what went on during the making of this episode, the concepts, the origins, and so on. This is one of those episodes, first of all, I should say, had one of the shortest intros. I tried to shorten down my intro due to popular reasons, or actually due to... Some people wanted to see a shorter version, which is kind of cool. Now, the origins of this episode actually date to when I saw this in theaters, believe it or not. I actually, I saw the uh, G.I. Joe, the first movie in theaters, did not like it, and then I saw Retaliation, I'm like, wow, this kicks ass. And it's funny because I never grew up with G.I. Joe. I mean, I kind of knew about it, but it was kind of past my time. The most I actually watched series-wise was there's this old Fine Brothers movie called G.I. Joe, The Epic Saga. And I'm not sure if many people know about it now, but it's something I actually want to talk about in a review where they did these action figure adult movie kind of things. So they were kind of cool. It was kind of a fun show, uh, miniseries on YouTube. That was pretty much my first time seeing most of G.I. Joe, which is right here. Um, so basically, the origins, I remember I wrote a review er, very early on when the film came out. And I just never touched on it until 2016. This review came out in 2013, so it took three years to finally review it. And this was also really the first big review, aside from Earthquake, that actually talked about um, more of the plot points of the sh of our Big Jack Films reviews. This was the one that kind of really got things going. I know Earthquake kind of started it, a little post credit scene at the end, but with um, G.I. Joe, this was the first time we wanted to actually tell a story in these reviews. Rather than them just being simple, we wanted to actually kind of do some something cool plot-wise and kind of tell stories we've always wanted to do. So this was kind of the groundwork for it. Now, I have not seen the anime G.I. Joe movie. What's really funny is the same week I put this out on YouTube, Nostalgia Critic uh, Doug Walker did his review of the animated movie, and I thought, what odd timing for that that we both put out Joe reviews. So the reason I also wanted to include Cobra Commander in this episode was because our buddy Josh, uh, Endgamer64, who has helped us on a lot of videos, he just so happened to have a Cobra Commander cosplay from this film. So we figured we incorporate that into the review. I thought it'd be kind of cool. It'd be like an AVGN episode where he fights Bugs Bunny or something. So for a long time, those gauntlets were gone. I actually just found those in my closet. <laughs> uh, I was CGI uh, Cobra ship, which was kind of cool to have. Found that off YouTube. Now, these guys are from a summer camp I was at at the time. So I figured eh, I might as well incorporate them into the videos and see if they'd want to have some fun. Now, it was hard to make a platform 2D background, so what we would do is, for Cobra coming down the platform, we set a little a, a strip of wood, like a big, thick piece of wood, on a wheelbarrow so he could easily come down, then we just mat in the ship later. Now, yes, you can see the camera and my reflection in the mask. It was really hard to shoot with that around. It's better in the wide shots, honestly. Like, it's hardly noticeable. Now, Cobra's voice, like, Cobra's played in costume by Josh, but uh, the voice is Thomas uh, Lovekio, a.k.a. Harold of Vortis, who also provides the voice of Gablor, the Dark Lord of the show. So I figured we'd start with him as Cobra and see if we could work something from there. And we just started... This was really an experiment, so that's why half the time... Cobra's a little hard to understand because we tried to change the voices from his to uh, the Dark Lord himself. Now, some of this dialogue, too, is also referencing A New Hope, uh, the first Star Wars film, where it's like, you know, surprise, you didn't have the cabbage to take the responsibility yourself. And it's funny, in the bloopers, you have us talking about Star Wars. Now, that is my phone being used for the control, and yeah, these guys, these my guards. I'm pretty useless guards, honestly. Um, and I, yeah, so we thought this idea where he jams my portal to the other worlds, and uh, this might come become a plot point later in the season finale of season four. Now, of course, um, we obviously had to get 18 in there somehow because she is a side character at this point. So we had her just running the control panels down somewhere in, in, in the household. There's some sort of, like, computer lab. Now, 
I normally not want to use real guns in my videos or pro like realistic looking guns, but I obviously for Cobra, I want to use that. But I think for me, the idea is people wonder, why do you have a Nerf gun when he has a real pistol? Um, the idea is that, uh, my nerf guns are actually equipped with some sort of like energy bullet things that are allowed to actually shoot stuff and they're made through nerf guns so maybe i'll take those nerf guns in the future maybe make them look a bit more silver and brown or blackish to make them more realistic but we have been using a couple of realistic prop guns we're not going to use them as often but they're just there for any kind of like characters that need them uh, but nerf guns I find are better and they're safer. They are safer to use rather than realistic ones because you never know when the cops are going to show up. <laughs> so, yeah, we just kind of set up this little plot where Cobra takes over my uh, facilities and holds them hostage to his will until I review this pe until I review uh, G.I. Joe Retaliation. I almost called it a piece of shit, but I actually like this movie. I think Cobra's idea is that I'm not going to like it because it's a reboot of childhood shit and I was just getting used to it. And that's back when I had short hair. Uh, that has now changed since then. I'm thinking maybe down the line, once I finish some continuity-driven episodes, um, I want to go back to short hair because I know a lot of people have been saying, maybe I have the long hair, maybe not, but I do like it. Um, but I'm debating it. I'm going to keep the long hair as long as the continuity in my show is uh, ra around right now. And I really like how these shots came out. These were actually, at the time, we had just bought a brand new uh, Sony Handycam so we figured we'd try experimenting on it, and it actually came out pretty damn well. So, yeah, the review itself, um, I had to go through it several times to get it uh, officiated, like, pretty much approved by YouTube, and they kept claiming it constantly, and not only finally with this cut, I was able to actually uh, do a actual way to monetize it. And yes, I wanted to make a joke about Game of Thrones because Jonathan Price is in this movie, and also Shrek. Even though I'm not a big Shrek fan, honestly. So, yeah, this was just it. The review was just kind of fun to do. All this stuff was written when I was, uh, when the movie first came out, and I just kind of gave my first opinions, and I was able to change the script a lot around a little bit to make it a bit better. And it's funny, because this is, I think, the second time Dukes died, because he dies in the first original G.I. Joe movie, too. Yeah, right here. Now, I had a hard time finding a clip of that, so I had to take uh, Wearzilla's review of, um, I think, King Kong Lives. That, um, he's just a fun guy to work with um, in terms of, like, in Hollywood right now. Like, everybody's wanting him. He's like the new Schwarzenegger, which is kind of cool. Um, I do like this also, even though this is kind of a reboot, they actually do have uh, continuity with the series, with, uh, with, the, with the first film. I like this line, though. Destro, you're out of the band. That's that is kind of cool. Okay, the reason I made a Hanson joke because I had no way to counter that line. I just figured talk about Hanson because nobody gives a shit. It's a boring band. It was a waste of time. It was the last of the boy bands of the '90s, and it just sucked. And yeah, you've got Bruce Willis and all that. It's a this is a decent movie, and I'd actually recommend it. I do like this joke where Cobra's sitting down and is uh, reading the paper. It's, I like, I love this. And superior to the first one. <laughs> the reason I came up with that, I just thought, he just, we had to make Cobra kind of just do something while he was waiting, so he's monetizing my time. And I like the idea that his, like, little ship is kind of this nice little living room, <laughs> which is my living room, but I thought that was kind of funny, that his ship looks like that. He's just sitting down reading a, a newspaper. But yeah, it's just, a, it, like, no one is. This movie is very much a stunt show, kind of a reminder of, like, something out of Universal Studios, which I'm surprised Universal has never done a G.I. Joe ride or a G.I. Joe stunt show. I think I would actually go watch that. That'd be fucking awesome. So, yeah, it was just riding it around, like, the script, changing it around to make it match better, and that's really about it with this episode. We just kind of just did what we did, uh, and a lot of the action was kind of made up on the spot, even though I did have kind of a written choreographed version of how I wanted the battle to be at the end. It was more just improv, and obviously with Josh, what I love to do and work with them is, um, well, first of all, I should say I like this idea that there's so many one-liners that it gets to the almost Batman and Robin levels of annoyance. Like, it's real, like, this is, 
this funny. This is very much the style of Dakota where he's just constantly getting interrupted and he's like, shut up, enough, stop. Like the only thing I don't have is like an elephant. <laughs> yeah, and then I cut to other Dwayne Johnson movies like Fast and Furious and then Batman and Robin. It's always great to like do that with movies where you can intercut with other films that look the same. And yeah, the quality on that mo film footage of that Fast and Furious was really bad. It was the only one I could find on YouTube at the time. Now, I had one that actually was a little better, but it had an alternate take, and I preferred that one instead. Just like, for the love of God, just stop! Um, and yeah, Jenny Tatum's only in the beginning of this. He's like, sorry, I'm trying to make that Gambit movie that's never gonna happen! <laughs> so, yeah, we were very much writing, or, like, what's great about Josh, as I was saying, he's fantastic to work with in terms of comedy. He's very much like Brett when we shot Kong, is that, you know, you give him a scenario of what the dialogue is, how the scene is played out, and in between all that, come up with some improvisation. Uh, come up with some ways to make it funnier and unexpected and then like once we start laughing That's when we cut and then I can put that into the video. It's always great to do improv Although I found out a, a quote from John Reese Davis when they were shooting Return of the King and they're shooting that scene where Gimli is drunk as hell he quoted in a documentary saying um, Improvisation naturally is 97% garbage that's kind of half and half for me because most of the time it's like very, um, if you can, if you have somebody who you know is funny, it's going to work and it's going to be really fun and it's going to be really funny. But yeah, sometimes they don't know how to make it funny. But yeah, like for me, I always like to work with the comedic actors so they can come up with a joke here and there and kind of lighten the mood a little bit because we don't want to be too serious. Yeah, and I love Cobra's upgrade from the last one because the last one looked like fucking ass. Look at this. This is awful. Although to be fair, it's funny because nowadays that movie has actually gotten a reputation of actually being kind of fun. Um, like Josh actually really likes both films, even though they're like really dumb, like 80s dumb. Uh, they are kind of cool. Well, it's funny because we had a costume and that was uh, Josh's cosplay for uh, Cover Commander, which was kind of cool. That was the one shot that sold me in the trailers was uh, um, Cobra's flags on the White House. I was like, that's kind of clever. Now, it's funny because that clip got me claimed on YouTube of him saying, you know, missiles on every country, two for North Korea just for the hell of it. And North Korea was just like, what? What? And that is kind of funny. That is funny. And yeah, I know this was in 3D. I just saw it in a regular showing, but I heard it was apparently like a really good 3D. did well financially. Yeah, I'm surprised that first one did so well, even though it's not that good. Like, the only things good about it were Baroness and uh, General Hawk, played by Dennis Quaid. Now, it's funny, because right now, they are shooting the third one, and in some countries, it's called G.I. Joe 3, but it's just basically becoming a uh, Snake Eyes uh, origin story. Now, I, it's, as long as it's in continuity with the last two, I'll go see it, because so far, yeah, like... That second one was really good, but that first one was awful. Um, so... I can't try to, try to think what else to talk about with this episode. So, yeah, like, the director was fine. Like, this is this is the kind of guy that you, you, uh, you hire for, like, a cheap sequel. And it's weird, because the sequel kind of feels like, in a way, like, Mortal Kombat. Like, it feels like... You know how there's, like, the first Mortal Kombat, and then there's Mortal Kombat Annihilation? In this film, it's kind of the roles are reversed, where the first one is Annihilation, and this one is uh, the good Mortal Kombat movie. But yeah, like, this one was, yeah, it's still way better. And this is Digital Domain, who um, did a lot of the stuff for Avatar and a lot of James Cameron stuff. And something I realized, um, what is it? Zartan is played by the guy who's the mummy in the mummy movies. Again, kind of... Uh, coming back to when Steven Summers made the first one. Was he Zortan the first one? I can't remember. I know there were a lot of mummy cameos at the time. So, what's interesting with Henry Jackman, since this review, he did Kong Skull Island, and that was actually a really decent film. Um, and he's kind of a very generic composer, but I do like some of his work. So yeah, this was meant to be basically a simple review, but as we've written a story around it, um... 
it kind of made it a bit longer in a way. I always like to use Boondocks clips when I can, even though that show I know is not really appropriate to use clips from, like 90% of the time. There are one or two clips that are acceptable that you can use without any real foul language used. Um, but what's also cool is that, like, I really enjoy the, um... Fuck, I forgot what I was gonna say. God damn, this commentary is going nowhere. So, the idea for me was that this movie um, was going to be a simple review, but then it eventually became a story, obviously. Now, it's something I kind of want to go back to because I realize my stories are getting a lot bigger, but I want to kind of go back to a bit more smaller, condensed reviews, which I have planned. So, a lot of the story-driven stuff we're probably going to be saved for the end, like post credit scenes that we're just going to go back to focusing on reviews because now that I know how to do it better, I can actually make them come out faster. So, I could expect maybe like two reviews a month at least, maybe one, but I am going to try this year, definitely. So as we get to the ending, uh, we obviously have our final battle with me and Cobra. It was fun to kind of just, uh, you know, have do this fight scene, add all the special effects. Like, even Josh, at first, like, when we were shooting, he was like, he wasn't too sure about how it was all going to work. But then when he saw it, he saw the ending, he's like, okay, okay, this is cool. This is fun. He kind of had the same reaction that Michael Eisner had during Pirates, where he's like, uh, I don't know about this, but he sees the set, he's like, okay, this is cool. Yeah, yeah, make it happen. Um, so that was kind of a relief to get his uh, approval on that. Now, I don't know if this is still a thing, if they're still making this, the G.I. Joe Transformers movie. Um, I'm not 100% sure on that. I don't know if the third G.I. Joe, if they're going to establish something, but I, I still want to kind of see this. This uh, G.I. Joe Transformers crossover. I think that'd be kind of cool to have. Like, Cobra Decepticons. That'd be great. Or, like, Decepticons, or, like, Decepticons built by Cobra. Like, I would totally watch that. So, the fight scene was pretty easy to shoot now that I, I kind of figured out how to do do most of it. The main thing was to shoot all the Cobra stuff on one day, and then the second day come back and do others. Okay, I always like to use, like, I, I used the, that Toy Story pun, and then I realized, oh, I should add Woody in there. So I grabbed my old Woody doll, and I made it do the little bit and added his voice in there. And then that transition, that Star Wars transition, that's from LEGO Star Wars, for all the LEGO Star Wars fans on TikTok. Um... We did a couple of takes of him throwing it because we can never catch it on the right take. I think there's about five takes where he misses it, so we had to kind of choose the best ones. Now, the idea is that there was this great war that happened years ago uh, before the events of the show, and the idea is that I've kind of got it. My character's gone into hiding since, and he's kept all these villains and certain characters on USBs in this... like It's kind of like Jurassic Park with the genetic uh, jars. So... I just gave him back all his villains, so things like Zartan and Destro and all that, they're all in that little USB to maybe use for later if I do another G.I. Joe review, who knows? I don't think so. That's awesome, I love that with 18 being able to hack into the mainframe and get it back online for us, it's very Jurassic Park based. Um, so yeah, it was fun. I think that was improv most of the time of him just like clicking the button, just knowing when to cut. Um, so no, yeah, like a lot, this, there were a bit of the dialogue took a while. So we shot all the first day of Cobra stuff and then the second day, all my solo stuff. So it made it a lot easier to kind of know what to shoot and what not to shoot that day. Now, if you look in the background, those spikes, that's what's left of the Kong wall. And uh, to this day, I'd use them for uh, majority of it for spears and stuff for props. Now that's actually a take. I actually fell a few times in this review. There's one shot coming up inside the shed where I fell and hurt my ankle. Um, so a lot of this is kind of based on that nerf, uh, video that Racka Racka did. I kind of went for the same style. And yeah, I love using that AK-47, that toy AK. It's always fun. Um, but yeah, this was the kind of stuff that was just really enjoyable to play around with at the time. Uh, and just come up with some crazy action scenes. So I would just say, you know, dodge bullets, dodge bullets, now shoot, shoot a couple loads. And then we would, like, kind of play it back and forth. And I like the idea that I have Captain America Shield because I just acquired that from Shield itself, like a little miniature version that can help me. And yeah, those gauntlets are meant to be uh, reflective to bullets. I have all this kind of tack and weapons in that shed that I use. They're like my whole shed down there is essentially an armory. That line of him saying your training's gone, Rusty Boy. This is right here. This fight it's kind of like AVGN, but uh, where he says your training's gone, Rusty Boy. That is straight out of uh, Star Wars: The Clone Wars, where. Count Dooku tells Anakin, your training has gone a long way, boy. 
Now, I don't know why I just chose to put Iron Man in there. I need to find a way to defeat Cobra without myself, because clearly I was outmatched. So I just had it where all of a sudden, Iron Man flies in, voiced by Nick Jackson in the scene. Uh, Cause it, I originally wanted to get an Iron Man cosplayer, but we never was able to find one. So I just used a CGI counterpart, which is pretty much like in the movies. And Nick Jackson actually does a really good uh, Iron Man, like a really good Tony Stark. And again, we didn't have Joe, so half of it was mostly stuck, I know. But for now, that was the closest we got. Um, at least that, like, what, Jean-Claude Van Damme footage or whatever comes in handy. But it was easy to kind of plan this without moving my camera in the way and setting up the shot exactly. Yeah, and that line will come in handy, I think, later on in uh, the season finale of season four. Maybe we'll have Cobra come back. I think that'd be kind of cool. He gets his revenge. So yeah, and he just flies off. Uh, very simple episode, not too complicated. I have to also remind myself to add that in later is that there is a base and it's been like, there's our defenses around this, my area. But yeah, that was just fun to do, this little Iron Man cameo there. Now, what was cool about shooting this last shot was that I'm surrounded by green, so why not add the American flag in the background and use the trees as green screen? And honestly, it kind of worked in my favor. And knowing is half the battle. Big Jack Films! Oh, I, I just knew I had to end it like that by saying knowing is half the battle and spoofing uh, the G.I. Joe uh, cartoon at the end with the PSAs. Like, holy cow, I'm totally going so fast. Oh, fuck. Um, but it was just a really fun review. I overhead all had a blast. And yeah, the, um, the, I think, I can't remember what the post credit scene is. I think it's just Cobra getting choked out. And the majority of that was like, the. I'll, I'll get to that when we get the post credit scene. But that, it was a fun review. I still overall had a really good time with that. So now we hit the post credit scene. We're at the Dark Lord's castle, obviously. Um... Now, people wonder what the music is in the background. It's actually the theme to Darkness from Legend, but nowadays I've had to kind of figure out how to not use it because of copyright claims. Uh, it's been a little difficult, but it's this is very easy stuff. We shot this. This was the last thing we shot with Cobra, and it was on a green screen. But what sucked was it started to rain, and you can kind of notice the raindrops in between. Uh, it really started to drizzle. By the time we got those shots, we were pretty much done. Now, a lot of this was supposed to set up that the Dark Lord wasn't really in his true form yet. He was still healing for after years of hibernation. Now, the idea here, I love this, is um, he's kind of essentially force choking him. And these close-ups of Cobra's throat are actually, I hate to say it, they're surgery. They're stock footage of, like, like throat surgery being done. And I just quickly cut because I didn't want to drag it too long to where it got too graphic. But those are actual shots of uh, surgeries being done on uh, patients where they uh, have to get like something like out of their throat, which is an actual thing. Um, I just wanted to add that little bit of gore to it and make it a little dark, essentially. Um, and this leads up, obviously, to the uh, Kong King of the Apes review, uh, which I have done a commentary on, which you can check out. But that's really about it. Um, again, guys, thank you so much for watching this commentary. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know if you want to see any more in the comments below. Support us on Patreon. Follow us on all social media. And until the next video, like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys later. This is Big Jack Film signing off. Bye.